Mercedes-Benz has already given us the EQS SUV and the EQE SUV. For 2023, they're giving us their smallest version of electric SUVs called the EQB. So what's it like? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. So to start with, the EQB350 drives like a normal electric vehicle. It has instant response as soon as you put your foot down. It goes pretty quick. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour is done in 6.2 seconds according to Mercedes-Benz. But they're always erring on the side of caution, so realistically it'll probably do it closer to 6 or 5.9 seconds. But anyway, supplying all that acceleration are two electric motors, one in the front and one in the back. Combined, they produce 288 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque. For the type of car that this is, the power is more than enough. As I demonstrated, when you set off from a stop, it is really quick. When you're overtaking on highways or merging onto a highways, it has no problems whatsoever. But when you're not pretending to be Lewis Hamilton, then in a city environment, this car is really easy to drive. Accelerator response is on the sharp side, but it's not too sharp. However, if you find that it's a little bit too abrupt when you initially put your foot on it, then you can switch the car into the eco drive mode and the accelerator does become a little bit more lazy in a sense. So it does make for smoother accelerations. Around corners, it's pretty okay. It's nothing too spectacular, but it does take them quite well. Obviously, the extra weight of the batteries do provide you that planted feeling, but you do feel the weight trying to pull the car towards the outside of the corner. You can actually option the EQB with adaptive dampers, but unfortunately, this demo vehicle does not have it. But even without the dampers, this car can still take corners at a pretty reasonable speed and it also grips pretty well, despite the fact that this car already has winter tires on it. The EQB350 utilizes a 70.5 kilowatt hour battery pack that is mounted in the floor. This provides enough power to allow for up to 356 kilometers of driving range, according to Mercedes-Benz. During my time with the EQB350, I was able to achieve an average energy efficiency rating of 20.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Like many other EVs, the Mercedes EQB is capable of level 2 AC and level 3 DC charging. However, the maximum charge rate is just 100 kilowatts, while other EVs can have upwards of 150 kilowatts. But even so, Mercedes claimed that 10% to 80% charge from a level 3 charger can be accomplished in 32 minutes. The maximum AC charging speed is 11 kilowatts, which enables the EQB350 to recharge from 10% to 100% in a Mercedes claimed 6 hours and 15 minutes. Some energy can be recuperated through regenerative braking, but unlike other EVs, the 2023 Mercedes EQB350 does not have a true one pedal mode. The three braking modes provide low, mid, and high regen, but to bring the car to a complete stop, you have to put your foot on the brake pedal. Speaking of which, it does possess some odd characteristics. If the regen braking mode is low, the pedal feels pretty normal, as in it provides good resistance whether you push it lightly or firmly. In the mid and high regen braking modes, from time to time you can notice the difference between regen braking and the brake calipers taking over. Thankfully, this brake pedal does not move on its own accord like the one in the Mercedes EQS SUV when I drove that car. But you can feel that while you're slowing down on the regen braking and you press on the brake pedal, it is light. It's only when pressing further on it that it begins to firm up in the mid and high regen modes. One highlight of this 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQB350 is the ride quality and NVH. 
The standard suspension absorbs bumps with little fuss. The car can cope very well with poorly maintained city streets. In addition to the ride comfort and ease of driving, the electric powertrain is buttery smooth and the electric motors make no noise. There is some artificial noise coming through the speakers when the speeds build up, but it's barely noticeable. Road noise is equally well isolated into the cabin. The interior of the EQB is identical to that of the GLB. There's nothing in here to let me know that it's an electric vehicle apart from the little EQ logo that's right in front of the digital driver display. However, that is a good thing and also a bad thing that it looks exactly like the GLB. So the bad thing is that the materials in here are not exactly what you would expect from a luxury vehicle, especially for the price that you're paying for this car, which I'll get to in just a little bit. Now the leather on the steering wheel is really nice to the touch, but the Artico synthetic leather on the seats just does not feel that great. Plus there's a lot of plastics in here, the faux metal weave doesn't really look all that great, and of course there is a lot of gloss black plastic around the vents and on the center console. If this was the GLB 250, it's perfectly fine because that's an entry level luxury vehicle, but this car is quite expensive which again I'll get to in just a little bit. Now on the flip side when it comes to functionality this interior is fantastic. There are physical controls for the climate so every time that you toggle one of these switches you know that you did actually change something it's not built into the touchscreen. You even have a touchpad to control the infotainment system. Not that I actually use this touchpad, I much prefer using the touchscreen, but in case you don't want to get fingerprint smudges on the touchscreen, you can use this touchpad. And also you have physical controls on the steering wheel. None of those capacitive touch controls that you get on newer Mercedes-Benz vehicles like the EQE or the GLC 300. That's the one I was looking for. Oh, by the way, I did a review on the GLC 300, which you can check out up here if you're interested. So in terms of functionality, this interior is really good. In terms of materials, not so good for the price of this car. And as for interior space, of course, the front occupants have a lot of it. Plenty of legroom. I can move the seat further back if I want more and tons and tons of headroom. Mind you, this seat is in its lowest position, so even if I raise it to have a better view out the front, I still have tons and tons of headroom. So now let's go check out the back seats. With the GLB being a box on wheels, there is actually quite a good amount of space in these back seats, despite the fact that this is a smaller Mercedes-Benz vehicle. So behind my six foot four driving position, my knees are just barely touching the back of the front seat, but they don't feel squished in any way. Granted, the back of the front seat is made out of hard plastic instead of soft leather, so every time that the car slows down, my knees will be digging into the back of this front seat. But otherwise, still pretty comfortable. Headroom though is not the greatest because you do sit much higher up in these back seats than in the front, so for somebody as tall as myself, eh, my hair is brushing up against the headliner. I can, however, recline these back seats a little bit and have a tiny bit more headroom, but still not the best, but also not the worst. And also I forgot these seats do slide forwards and backwards, so you can trade legroom here for legroom in the third row. Yes, this car is available with a third row and this particular demo vehicle does have that option. So let's quickly check out those back seats. Getting into the third row is pretty straightforward. Just pull on the tab, seat slides forward. The opening <clears throat> isn't really the biggest, but eventually you do get in. And obviously the amount of space you have back here, or legroom I should say, really depends on how far back the second row seats go. So if I pull them as far back as I can without crushing my legs, Clearly, there isn't a whole lot of space back here, at least not for adults. This third row seat was made for kids, and honestly, I think it was made for emergencies only. You shouldn't be using this car as a three row SUV because it is just way too tight in here. Again, emergencies only. 
behind the seats, the EQB350 has almost no cargo space with the third row seats up. Perhaps there is enough space for a small backpack. With the third row seats stowed away, it has 495 liters of space. And with the second row seats folded, that number increases to 1,710 liters. Under the hood, you will not find any additional storage. The Mercedes EQB350 is equipped with quite a few convenience features, but at the price point that it's at, it doesn't come with everything. So standard and available options include heated and power operated front seats with memory, heated steering wheel, panoramic sunroof, hands-free power lift gates, wireless phone charging pad, dual zone automatic climate control, surround view cameras, a head-up display, Burmeister surround sound system, and keyless entry with push button start. But it doesn't have features such as heated rear seats, ventilated front seats, or a three zone automatic climate control to name a few. A lot of its competitors do have these features for the price point. The infotainment system is the older version of the MBUX interface. It's displayed on a 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen, and although it's not as responsive as the latest iteration of MBUX, it still functions just fine. It allows for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, but neither are paired wirelessly. As for the looks, the EQB has an overall shape that is similar to the GLB. The only key difference is the one-piece grille, the rear light bar, and lack of exhaust pipes. For the 2024 model year, the EQB receives a slight front fascia tweak, but the overall shape remains. So how much is the Mercedes EQB going to cost you? A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. It starts at $75,700 Canadian, and the way that this one is equipped, it'll cost you $85,500 Canadian. Now, for us here in Canada, the EQB350 is the only one that we get. For 2024, we should be getting the EQB250, and I suspect that it'll have a starting price somewhere around $60,000 or $65,000 Canadian. Still quite a bit of money. But if you're watching in the United States, then you guys already have the EQB250 and the 300 in addition to the 350. So you guys do have more options. But for us in Canada, at least for 2023, the 350 is the only one that we get. So by now, you probably already know what I'm going to say about that EQB350. It just costs way too much money and it doesn't really exude that feeling of luxury that one would expect from a Mercedes-Benz vehicle. For the same price as that demo car, you can actually get a fully loaded GLB 35 AMG. And that's what I would do because I had a lot of fun when I last reviewed that car. Or you can even get the GLE 350 with the third row seat package for the same price as that demo. But if you are in the market for a luxury EV, then you have so many more options. There's a Genesis GV60 and the GV70 electrified, the Pulsar 2, Lexus RZ450e, Volvo XC40 recharge. You just have so many more options. And a lot of those cars do feel like luxury products. And a lot of them also have more range, more power, and cost less than that one does. So for the time being, the EQB is just too expensive for what you're getting, or rather not getting. However, if you would like to know more about that car, I have a written review with a few more details about it over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up here. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.